Well, hello there. So today I'm going to be talking about um, using this mission planner uh, with a simulator of an autonomous sailboat. So normally you would use this mission planner program to connect to an actual uh, ArduPilot based boat um, or quadcopter or whatever using the connect here and then you can control the thing. But it has built into it a simulator so that you can practice using the ground control station and all of the features. So that's what I'm going to demo today for an autonomous sailboat. So the first thing to do is um, up here we have the tabs that change the main screen. So the data screen is the primary screen that you use. Um, but to get the simulation going, we click on the simulation button. Okay, so the first thing you have to do here is you need to set the home location for where you want the boat to be when you start the simulation. So depending on different the last thing you used and different installation things, um, you'll have to find that. Sometimes you have to zoom way out and find where it is, and, and then you can just drag it around. So if you need to move it really far, just keep zooming out, um, and you can move it to as far away as you need. You can drag it across the US pretty quickly. I'm going to start this actually at uh, Richmond Yacht Club where I'll do some sailing today. That's where the boat's going to initialize itself with the GPS. So once you have your home location set up, then you can choose what kind of uh, vehicle you want to, to simulate. So uh, the sailboat's down here. You can see it does uh, quadcopters and airplanes and, and cars and things too. So we can use the sailboat and then you have to pick your firmware from the pictures. So the sailboat is a version of the rover firmware. So I'll pick the rover and then it will get going. So it downloads the fresh uh, ArduPilot software and in the format for the software in the loop simulator and starts it going and connects it. So it all happens pretty nicely. You can also run the simulator on your own on a separate machine and then connect to it, but this, this is really convenient. Once the boat is started up, here it is on the map. Um, usually I switch over to the messages window, which is this one here. Um, it takes a little bit for the Kalman filter to initialize and be um, be okay. So this EKF is the extended Kalman filter. Um, once it turns um, white from red, then it's ready to go. So that one is just initialized and you get some messages up here. Also on the messages window, you can find out what uh, version you're using of the firmware, the ArduPilot firmware. Um, so you can see I'm using version 4.1.0 development version. Um, but once the common filter is happy, it should stay that way for the rest of the time, then you can arm the boat, which you have to do right now. It says it's disarmed, so you can arm it and it will be uh, ready to control. So I'll push the arm button here over on the actions tab, um, and you can see here on the heads up display it's armed and it's, it's drifting along. Okay, so usually when I'm running the boat, I use the quick display here on the far left. And you can set these up. I'll show you later how to set up what you want to show uh, for a boat. It's probably different things than for a quadcopter. So just to get it uh, doing something right now, it's drifting with the wind. You can see the wind direction is 180 degrees so from the south. Uh, so I will put a, a go-to point here if I right-click on the map. I can do fly to here. Altitude doesn't matter because it's a boat, but you still have to give it one because it could be something else. Um, and now it's going to find its way um, to this waypoint. Again, it's going upwind, so it's going to tack its path up there. So now the boat's simulating, and we can just watch it go. For the next step, I'll make a waypoint plan so we can have uh, an actual route that the boat can store and you could do over and over. So we'll just put a couple of waypoints in. That's the plan tab here. 
and I can zoom in with my mouse and I can just click um, make sure this is on the mission and you can click for a waypoint and click for another waypoint and you can drag these around to wherever you want you can drag the map so I'll put two two waypoints pretty close together here so it can go between them pretty quickly because um, you can see it's, it's creeping along. Um, once I make the two waypoints, it will go, when I put it in autonomous mode, it's going to go to waypoint one, then waypoint two, and then it's going to stop. So I'm going to click here to make a third waypoint. And then down here in my waypoint list, I'm going to change that one to make it start over. So that would be a do jump action. So the waypoints can either be regular waypoints or they can have commands. So you can take photos and things. But this is going to jump to a waypoint. So I have to put the waypoint number. I want it from, to go from 2 back to 1. So I'll put waypoint 1 in here. And then you have to tell it how many times um, will it repeat that. Um, and 0 will mean it never works. So that's a problem. Negative 1 means repeat forever. So that's the usual setup there. Start your last waypoint jumps back to the beginning over and over again, especially for the simulator. Um, you can walk away and let this thing run. So that's my, my flight plan. I've got the home set up here. Um, you can change that or it will redefine what, when the um, GPS initializes on your actual vehicle. But that's for return to home commands, my two waypoints here. So to put that into the boat, I use the right button here, and we upload it to the boat. So now that's stored in the boat, and it's still in the guided mode. It's still going to this place where we clicked on the map. So I can switch now from plan back to data, and we can see the, the tacking it's doing to get upwind. It's trying to get to this waypoint. So let's go. let it go a little longer. We'll let it get to this first um, guided waypoint and then we'll run the autonomous thing. So things you can look at while you're monitoring the progress. Um, this is the heads up display. It has the, the artificial horizon with tilt and things not very useful for a boat. You can see it tilt when it's tilted. Um, but this here, guided, that's the mode that it's in. And this 56 meters with the greater than sign, it's headed for this guided waypoint, which is waypoint zero. And you can watch the distance countdown here. So this is a good thing to keep your eye on. Because um, if it changes out of guided mode, it's going to be doing something else. Um, battery voltage down here on a real boat is useful. Um, and then the Kalman filter actually has, um, if you, I just clicked on it, and then you get this other window that has um, the status of all of the parts of the Coleman filter, which is your attitude estimate, combining all of the sensors to give you tilt and heading and things like that. So uh, the simulator, it always works well, but sometimes if your GPS gets covered up, you'll, you'll get a warning on a real boat. So you can see we, we tacked for the ley line. It's headed for the actual mark here. Um, you can see it doesn't have any knowledge of what's around it. It just goes a fixed distance and then tacks every time. So it crashed into the dock here. The simulator doesn't know. But now it's, it's three, zero, made it. And now it's just gonna circle around. All right, so let's put it in autonomous mode and start it following these waypoints. That's the more common one. This guided is nice if you wanna get it out of the way of somebody, you can just click and fly to. But normally you're following waypoints. So again, go to the Actions tab and push the Auto button. And now it's headed for waypoint one. So we're now 45 meters to waypoint one. Um, and it's in auto mode. So again, I'll go back to the quick here. Um, we'll We'll watch it go. The wind's blowing from the bottom of the screen up, so it's going downwind now, so it can go straight. It's got auto pan turned on, 
this button so it follows the boat. If I try to pan it away, it will fix it for me. We've got the latitude and longitude down here at the bottom of the screen. In case you lose it, you can go after it. Uh, compass heading up here at the top. So it's going roughly north. The three lines coming off of the boat are color-coded with these. So there's the current heading direct to the waypoint is orange and target heading is green, trying to get back on. It's trying to follow the path between here. So the target is normally back towards the path line that it's trying to follow. So you can see we're at 876, getting down to waypoint 2, and then it'll turn around and start back heading for 1. So 70 meters away point one. So we can see it's going to, to tack its way out. This display is the cross track error, which is the perpendicular distance from our path line, our course line, to the boat. And this is what it uses to know when to tack. So I think it's set to 25, I think, meters. So when this gets to 25, it's going to tack. We can see in the messages, it will say when it's tacking, and it'll talk about the waypoints it's reached, so you get some updates here. If you have a ground station that talks, I think you can turn this one on. It, it will usually announce these two. So I'm usually toggling between the messages way over here and quick and actions. So you can see it's going to make it up to waypoint number one. Once it crosses over the line, then you can see this green line is trying to get it back on the path. That's our target heading. But when it lines up here, it'll tack for the ley line. So in order to keep it from hitting the houses and the boats here, we need to control the tacking. So one thing we can do is change that cross track setting so we do that. This, these are parameters that are part of the autopilot stored on the boat. So we can go into the config menu, and I usually do the full parameter list or the full parameter tree. And these are all the things on the autopilot, but the ground station mission planner reads them from the boat when, it's, when it connects, so you can update them here. There are lots and lots of them, so usually use the search button. Um, if you type tack, um, you can set it up to tack with the radio controller, but there's also this cross track max. So 25 meters is where it will tack. So I could set that to 10. Um, and when you click away, it's green because you've changed it. And so if you write parameters to the boat, that will send them up. It takes a lot longer in real life, but with the simulation, it's very fast. So I've changed that to tack at 10 meters. So we can watch now um, the cross-track error. We're headed back upwind. So the negative means it's on one side and positive is the other side. So it's going to tack right there. So it tacked at 10 meters. So that tightens things up. And you can use more waypoints because it'll tack on the ley line. So if you put more waypoints, it won't get as far away either. So Adjusting your course and then simulating it is a good way to make sure you're not going to hit the docks. The other thing you might need to change for your location is the wind direction and the wind speed. Those are stored um, for the simulator also on the boat's parameters. So if you do search for wind, um, we get these. We have lots of you know, for the wind wind vane type on your boat and everything that you would set up for actual autonomous boat. But here's the simulation wind direction and the simulation wind speed. So if I want it to come from the east, this is compass heading. I can set it to 90 um, and then write parameters and then back to the main page and you can see now there's some there's a randomness there were some other parameters so that this will have small wind shifts and you can adjust those too so roughly 90 degrees now
so we won't have to tack. Um, for this um, simulation, um, south is actually better, so, so I'm going to change that back. Now I've got three meters per second from the south. So the boat should go a little faster. So it's just going to keep going between these two waypoints. Um, so now you've seen how to initialize it, how to set the wind direction, and some of the upwind parameters. Let me just show you quickly how to change these displays if you want to. So to change the displays, uh, you just click on them, double click, and then it shows you all of the possible things. If you have a small computer, sometimes this gets cropped, um, but I've got, got them here. So ground speed, I have um, the heading, which is also shown up at the top of the heads up display, cross track error, which is the tacking parameter, the wind speed, the distance to waypoint, which is also on the heads up display. Oh, I've got it in two places. <laughs> uh, the geofence I'll show you in a second. Um, you can change how many of these. If you right click somewhere in the middle, you can set the number of things to display. So I've got two columns and four rows. So if you want uh, more of these or less of these, you can set that grid size and then you can resize it by going back and forth. The aspect ratio of this stays the same, so this takes up the rest of the space. And there are other things you can configure, but that's, that's good for now. All right, so the last way to change how to control upwind is to put a fence, a no-go kind of zone, which is really useful for this upwind stuff. So for that, it's again back in the flight plan, or the sailing plan um, tab up here. And then rather than the mission, which is what we're seeing here, um, we would switch to the fence. And it gives us some instructions. Um, and then you click over here on the polygon, and then you can click around connects them together. So you, you're just adding them. So I'm going to outline the areas that I don't want it to hit. And it stays fairly conservative. And that's a parameter I'm not exactly sure how to change. Uh, how, how close to the fence you can get. But we'll set one up and see what happens here. There, that's pretty good. So I want it to stay inside this zone. So then I need to change it to a, I think, a fence inclusion. So I click on that. And yeah, there it is. And then I write that to the boat. And if all works, we should see it now. Yeah, so now we can see the, um, the fence. The one other thing you have to do with the fence is in the configuration, you have to enable it. So type fence over here in the search um, and make sure your fence enable is set to one. So I think it, it defaults to zero, but I've got fence enabled from playing around with it before. Fence enable there. So if we come back here now, actually let me change the, the cross track thing. Tack down at the bottom. I'll set this back to 25. Write the parameters. So now it will tack at 25 or when it crosses the fence, whichever comes first. So let's see. See how that works. So it's sailing downwind. And so now it's turned upwind, and we can see the cross track here. Is, it should go to 25 on the cross track, but it will tack because of the fence here coming up. 
so I tacked it 13 because of the fence. It uses sort of the projection to the fence distance, and I'm, I'm not sure what parameter controls that. If you know, uh, put your comment in the YouTube video. Um, but I haven't figured that out, and I haven't looked at the flight code itself to see. Oh, so here we have the geofence distance, so you can see um, what it's using to tack based on. But this keeps us um, in the safe, safe area. So with that, you can make complicated flight plans. We can add more waypoints if we wanted to. Go back to the plan, switch this over to mission. And you can see if you click in between, on the plus here, you'll get additional waypoints and you can move them around. So uh, we can set this one maybe over here, add one in the middle, go over there, put one there. Now it will do more of a complicated shape. And then we can write that up to the boat and switch back and it will automatically start doing it. So it's headed for waypoint one. So the fence is keeping it safe from the dock, and it's trying to head for waypoint one. I need to go for waypoint two. Not sure why. We can change which waypoint it goes to. We can have it go to one. Oh, I think. Well, let's send it back to one. Let's see what happens. Maybe it was going for the old one that it had stored in memory. And the thing I didn't check was what happens with the last waypoint. So there's waypoint one, and it's going to go to waypoint two. So I think it had to finish the old, it had to reach that waypoint it was headed for when we changed the plan. And yeah, at the bottom it's still jumping back to waypoint one. So that's good to check. So it's just going to follow its waypoints. Um, some of the other actions that are useful here is if you hit the loiter button, it will just hold its position. So I'll let it get somewhere in the middle and just put it in loiter mode. You can see the mode changes here. And now it's going to just do, it usually ends up doing kind of figure eights around that point. That's useful if you're trying to get let other boats go by, sometimes just loitering where it is and other people will go around it. Um, or you can also use the guided mode and you can click on the map and the fly to and it will switch to this guided mode and it'll go to here and then it loiters at that spot. So those are good ways to get out of people to you know avoid traffic. All right, so I think that's enough of what I wanted to show you today. Um, so hopefully this will help you get started with your autonomous sailboat project. See you later.